Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another Watcher. This one is titled, Are You Scared of What Lives in the Woods? No. Maybe. It's a 50-50 thing. Alright, I'm excited to get in today's video. If you guys are excited as I am, go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, cut up with something special. Let's get spooky. Yeah. <laughs> This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Nature is life's great tool to clear the mind. A bit of perspective to remind you how small you and likewise your problems really are. Still, there are times when that perspective isn't always so friendly and the smallness feels helpless drowning you in dread. In today's story, we'll see how long our narrator can tread water. Oh shit. This sounds spooky. I'm oh, Ryan Vergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madey the internet's scariest stories that may or may not be true. Now I have not read this story before and neither has Shane. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it until the end. Let's do it. Rabbits in the Creek. Do, do they still do I'm the Are You Scared? Because my family won't talk about it anymore. I'm the only one who can't seem to forget. I was raised on the outskirts of Preston, a small town in southern Idaho with a population of around 5,000. My more immediate community was an isolated dead end dirt road called Bear Creek. Less than 20 families lived on the Bear Creek. I didn't mind being so isolated. I grew up in the comfort of- I mean, I know they started this during, you know, the dark times. <laughs> but now that all that's over and, you know, we can all be around each other again, maybe they can do it with, like, Ryan actually telling him a story while, like, Shane's, like, laying in a bed, you know what I mean? That'd be cool as shit, bro. I got ideas. Get in contact with me. You know, you know, holler at your boy. Of wide fields and close neighbors that only rural people know. We were a Mormon community, very church centered, very community centered. All the young girls, myself included, were part of the young women's group and all of the boys were members of the local Boy Scout troop, which doubled as a church group in our area. We had 4th of July parties at the local ballpark and swam in the nearby reservoir. It was a good, quiet community. This all sounds very fun to me. I, I've always longed to grow up with a bunch of hillbillies in sort of a, sort of a holler somewhere, you know? I don't know if it's accurate right off the bat to call these people hillbillies. Yeah, it's fair. It's Idaho. They're hicks. I guess. Well, just because you live in a small town doesn't mean that you're a, you're a hillbilly. He said they all lived around the creek and played jugs together. There was no part about jugs. There was no I part where they, any jugs. of them were blowing air into jugs at different octaves. There was none of that. My house, That's cool a 92 year though. old farmhouse built by my great great grandfather was situated on a small hill surrounded by a wide grass field on one side and a snaking dirt road on the other. Across the road was the creek bottoms. Being so isolated, it wasn't uncommon for animals to come down from the mountains. We had a female moose who brought her calf down and lived in our orchard every winter, and the occasional lion wasn't unheard of either. The summer when I turned eight, a smaller mountain lion was spotted several times in our area. We weren't worried. The big cats stayed away from the farms and usually moved on when the area didn't yield enough food. I am concerned that the lions uh, are going to play into this in a way, but honestly, I could be up for some natural peril here. Like a right? lion just yeah. lodging its fangs into somebody's noggin, you know? It happens like 15... Now, when, 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 when we are talking lions, we are talking mountain lions, not like... Simba type lion. What, I mean, you know what I mean? We talk about like some Mufasa shit or just like some mountain lion. Mountain lions ain't bad. Like, they'll kill you. But I would be more scared of a really, really big kitty instead of just a big kitty. 
You know what I mean? Times a week in Los Angeles, some uh, d dingleberry will be out there walking in the mountains. <laughs> and a mountain lion will just <laughs> jump on him. That's what you get for wanting to take a picture with the Hollywood sign. The same summer, right. my neighbor, Peyton, was working on his Eagle Scout project. He loved National Geographic and thought it would be pretty cool to try putting together a National Geographic submission on our little creek bottoms. The young lion that happened to be in our area at the same time made him especially excited. He decided he wanted to try and get pictures of the lion and emailed the National Geographic team for advice. They recommended setting up an automatic camera that takes shots every couple of seconds in an area the lion was known to visit. Yeah. They also recommended setting some kind of bait so the lion was more likely to come by. No one in the creek liked the idea of live bait or carrion, so we came up with a different kind of bait. Glad they're showing restraint here by saying, hey, maybe live bait's not a good idea when it comes yeah. to taking photos of a lion. Yeah. Granted, if you were out there, Shane, I'd be more than happy to throw you out there because I feel like if any lion came towards you, all you would have to do is crane upward and really extend out all of your limbs and the lion would flee in terror. Oh yeah, I'd, I'd freak him out. Yeah, that's fair. If you made yourself <laughs> really big? Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, that's good as shit. Like if me. I came at you like that? That's not good. No, I don't like it. We decided to set up an audio recording of that, a that's dying scary rabbit. Shit and played on a loop through a set of speakers hidden in the willows. I remember when everyone was down in the bottoms testing the speakers, and I heard the noise for the first time. The sound of a dying rabbit is horrible. It's been described as being almost identical to the sound of a screaming child. The camera was set up, the speakers were set up, everything was perfect. Peyton explained that he would allow the camera and recording to play uninterrupted for a week, and then he would go check on it. This would give time for our scent to fade from the bottoms and encourage the lion to come closer. At first, I was worried about the noise. It was a truly horrible noise, and our house was the closest to the setup point in the bottoms. My father assured me that the noise wouldn't reach as far as our house, and I was relieved when we arrived home that night and he was correct. The bottoms were far enough away that I couldn't hear anything. I remember Peyton the next day at church. He was fidgety and excited to check on the equipment, but he had to wait a week, which everybody kept reminding him. He couldn't risk going down too early and scaring the- Ain't that the worst part when you're a fucking kid? I know you're really excited, but hold your horses. You know what I mean? We've all been there. I remember what it was like to be a kid. I was angry about a lot of shit. A lion away for good. That night, I woke up to an awful noise. I sat ramrod straight in my bed with my eyes wide in the dark. Hands clutched so hard, my palms bore the indent of my fingernails for hours after. I knew that noise. It was the recording of the rabbit. It sounded faint and far off, like it was coming from the bottoms, but that was impossible because the recording had been going all night the previous day and I hadn't heard a thing. I didn't sleep that night. I was too scared to get out of bed and wake my parents. The recording played over and over again. I had the loop memorized. In the morning, I stumbled into the kitchen for breakfast. My mom and dad were sitting at the kitchen table. They too had dark rings under their eyes. I hadn't been the only one who'd heard it. Mom was convinced that the equipment must have been broken. She wanted to go down into the bottoms to check it out. Dad refused. He was a kind, gentle man and didn't want to stir up any unnecessary drama. He was sure there had been a strong wind last night and the wind was carrying the noise farther than its natural reach. Possible, He possible. told us to listen. We did. He was right, we couldn't hear it now. We forgot about it and went about our daily goings. It's kind of crazy that wind could carry things farther. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's weird, right? That is a thing, though, I think. It is. I guess so. I can look it up. Do you need me to do some research? I'll be the guy in the van. I don't, I don't think we need to. I don't... Too late. I've already looked it up. Wind affects the propagation of sound by f refracting its waves. I've looked it up. We've, we've cracked it. I'm yeah. glad you verified that with a short two-second search. The next night, Respect. it happened again. I stayed up in bed with my back to the wall. 
The screaming was even louder than before, but this time something was different. It was lower pitched than I remember, and parts of the loop were slowed down as if the recording were warped in places. At times, the loop did not loop naturally and instead picked up at a random place in the middle. My mom didn't mention anything at the breakfast table, but both her and my dad seemed tense. The third night, I mustered the courage to stand beside my bedroom window and look out into the yard. For a moment I stood, rooted to the spot, my hands shaking no matter how hard I clenched them. The noise sidled in through the cracks in the window. I watched the outline of the trees in the yard, perfectly still. Not even the slightest breeze stirred their branches. My mom announced that she would be going to visit her sisters in town the next day and would probably spend the night there. She invited me to come along, but I was a daddy's girl at heart and chose to stay at the farm. I took mom's place beside dad in their bed that night, but even that didn't help. I don't think my dad was asleep either, for he was unnaturally still the whole night. I, I love that mom's like, peace. <laughs> Not even offering right? an explanation. That's the best fucking like, part. Hey, I think I'm gonna go see the sisters. You can't really stand them. They don't really like you. Nah, honey, you can go with me. Nah, I'm gonna stay here with dad. Shit, I love that. Mom's just dialing up. I'm getting my hair done. I'm going to go get my toes did. Bro, you don't even know. I'm going to get pampered and I'm going to sleep. I'm going to have cucumbers on my eyes while I do it. Fuck this shit. All right. Well, uh, ask your father. See you later. Yeah. I'm going shopping. <laughs> I'm going to go on a little uh, gals weekend. Bye, everybody. She did offer to take her daughter with her. It's just that her daughter was a daddy's girl. And that's her right to die at the farm with her father yeah. for whatever is yeah. coming towards them. We began to hear the noise during the day too. I was drawing with chalk on the sidewalk when it happened. My shoulders tensed and the hairs on the back of my neck prickled. There was only one scream, a short, high-pitched one. And then the recording fell silent. It happened again several times throughout the day, but never the whole loop, just clips from it. Later that evening, Peyton's dad came up the driveway. He said he was looking for their dog, a sweet yellow lab who had been missing since that morning. Dad said he was sorry and that we hadn't seen her. I stared at him, silently begging him to mention the recording, but he didn't. He was a quiet man after all. He didn't want to bring up any unnecessary drama. Mom stayed away the whole week. Dad and I didn't sleep. By Saturday, the screaming could be heard constantly, though it seemed to have deviated from the familiar loop entirely. I didn't recognize any of it. Sometimes the screams were thin and long. Other times, they were hardly more than growls. Once, while my dad had been heating up meatloaf for lunch, the noise rose into such a rancorous din that he dropped the plate and it shattered. I pressed my hands over my ears where I sat at the table and squeezed my eyes shut but it didn't help. The noise forced its way in through the cracks of my fingers and pinched my throat and rattled in my ribcage. The din lasted for a whole minute, then oh. fell silent. Dad was shaking. Sorry, that, that was, was really the last bad. we heard of the noise that wow. day. This is obviously getting quite alarming here. Let's put it this way. I'm not getting in line to be the first person to go down there and retrieve this equipment. It ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> Peyton came by Saturday evening to ask permission to cross our road to collect the equipment. He was so excited. I watched him disappear into the creek bottoms with a sense of tired relief. After the equipment was gone, it would all stop. I couldn't wait to get a full night's sleep. Okay, how is this person not concerned for Peyton? If you've been hearing everything you've been hearing all week, and now like here comes Peyton kind of just walking down, right. <laughs> walking down that dirt road. By this point, they've had no sleep for the week, and they're like, fuck Peyton. I hope he can see him by a fucking mountain lion, a piece of shit. Garen fucking to you. Going right past you towards where the sounds are coming from. Is there not any obligation to be like, hey, dude, wouldn't go down there if I were you? I mean, honestly, if Peyton is going to feed the beast, uh, then maybe the sounds will stop. Maybe the narrator's like, well, I'll send Peyton down there as a bit of a guinea pig. Hmm. Yes, yes, that's, um, Boom. that was why I was alarmed by it. Yeah, so, I mean, it's certainly not a alarm. friendly move. 
Well, and you're like, wait, well, wait here, Ryan. I see the chess move here. She's she's, <laughs> she's obviously sending him down there so that the, the the lion will stop making all the noise and she can go to sleep. Not a minute later, I spotted Peyton coming back up from the creek. I was confused. It had taken us much longer to set up the camera and speakers, so I'd only assumed it would take just as long to collect them. My breath stilled when Peyton came closer. He didn't look right. His eyes were wide and his face pale. Something wet dribbled from his chin and onto his shirt. I later realized it was vomit. My dad caught him before he fell and demanded to know what had happened. Peyton couldn't speak. He just cried. There's something more viscerally terrifying about seeing a boy throw up than any sort of red man or slug man. I don't want to see a boy throw up. The last time I was right. so scared I thought I was going to throw up was at the Old City Jail. I know what Peyton's feeling right now, so I'm wondering what he saw down there. We called his dad. I looked after Peyton as both my dad and his dad went into the bottoms. They were gone a long time. When they returned, their faces were grim and they smelled funny. I noticed red on my dad's hands. I asked what was wrong, but they brushed right past me and immediately called the police. Nobody would tell me what had happened. I sat on the couch as a blur of neighbors and police officers swirled around me. Wait a minute. The mom? Can I hazard a guess? The mom? Yeah, she'll go the for it, yeah. The mom, mom or the dog? got eaten. I don't know how. That is possible. I. I that is not my guest, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna my hold guess. mine close to the chest. Okay, okay. It does not right. involve Ma. At one point, an officer placed something on the kitchen table and left. I looked into the kitchen curiously. It was the camera from the bottoms. I wish I hadn't looked. The camera was a little banged up. Tiny scratches and dents covered the plastic casing. When I lifted it, my hand stuck to the plastic. Something Blood. tacky and odorous covered the screen, Blood. but it turned on fine. The first set of photos were normal. Just the pussy willows cast green in the glow of the night setting. As I continued to click through them, they quickly became strange. At one point, the camera angle changed, as if the camera had been knocked from its post. Grass now obscured most of the frame. Flecks of red appeared on the lens and remained for the rest of the sets. One photo made me pause. There was a figure in this one, or half of a figure, as most of the upper torso hadn't made it into the frame. I thought it could be human, but it didn't look like it should be standing upright. Its legs were twisted like an animal, and it seemed to be having difficulty supporting itself in an upright position. Beside the legs, a long, thin arm hung. Whatever it was must have been stooped over, for its fingertips hung below its crooked knees. The next set was different. It was as if the camera had been picked up and was now being held. The first photo was of the bottoms at night. The next startled me. I had to look closely before deciding what it was. A rabbit had been laid in the bushes but its ears and most of its scalp had been peeled away. The next was of the same rabbit, but a thin, dark hand was holding it up against the sky. Its limp body hung like something from a nightmare. In the following photos, more rabbits joined the one, each with their ears and scalp removed. Then a cat, then more cats, then a dog, the yellow lab, then the lion, the following photo was of seven rabbits, three cats, one dog, and the lion all laid out in a row facing the same way. Their arms and legs had been arranged as if they were marching, like some parade. All of their scalps had been removed, and tiny white glints of their skulls could be seen. The last photo was overly bright, like the photo had been taken too close with the flash on. An eye dominated the frame but it was yellowed and crusty and had a bar pupil like a horse. In the bottom corner, the edge of a mouth could be seen. No lips, just teeth, sharp and little with wide gaps of red gum between them. I wish I hadn't looked. I heard my dad talking to the police outside. They said the speakers had malfunctioned. The recording had only played the first night. 
So, are you scared? Fuck yeah! Fuck that! Fuck, fuck you! That. Fuck this! That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Hey, I'm a cop, but I'm uh, sort of a speaker cop, and uh... Yeah, 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 I'm a cop, but I also have a second job. I'm in the, I'm in the geek squad at Best Buy, and I could tell these speakers haven't been playing for at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, I didn't think about that. Now come on down to Best Buy, if you give them my name, they'll get you 15% off on some of these. <laughs> Alright, so now let's find out if this is a real story. According to the producers, Rabbits in the Creek is a creepypasta that is a true story written by an anonymous user. Well, here, look, I will say this. A lot of times creepypastas will claim to be true, but they actually aren't true, but it does make it more creepy. I think that might be the case here just because of the, uh, you know, alien in a photo or whatever that sure. humanoid figure is yeah. in the photo. Most of the story I think is fake. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but that said, I love it. I had a good time with this. I, I love the approach. Either way, I will chalk it up to a very entertaining story, and I certainly was creeped out, so kudos to the anonymous writer. Now write a sequel about, about Moose. Well, hope we see you next week. Good night. Good night. All right, I really enjoy that. I, I, I do, I enjoy just the little stories like this. Uh, it's... It's nice to get through. Like, you, there's, there's, there's some fucked up re, but nine times out of ten, it's just a bunch of bullshit, and I can respect that. It's just good fun, you know. I like that. All right. If you all enjoyed today's video as much as I did, please go down there and hit that thumbs up. While you're down there, going over, slap that subscribe button, and become part of the Bill Five Thousand Nation. We do some crazy shit here, and if you want to know when that crazy shit happens, ding that bell. It might work for you, it might not. If it do, though, jump in on one of my premieres, go over in the live chat and be like, hey, Bill, it worked. I got dinged so good. Leave a like and dip. That's all you got to do. I would never ask you to do more for me than I do for myself, and trust me, I don't do shit, bro. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Man, I'm telling you, that, that dog, the, the puppy, the puppy dog, the golden, yeah, it, it would have been okay if it would have had some clothes on from the Bill 5000 store. That's right. For all of our little four-legged friends out there, we have some Bill 5000 merch as well. Get them. Get them something now. Because you never know when it's going to come in handy. Yeah.